Hi everyone, I'm Javier Cifuentes Fabra from the University of Murcia in Spain. It is an honor to participate in this conference as a keynote speaker. Thank you very much to all the members of the organization for inviting me. We will talk about green economics and energy with a lecture entitled Assessing the Impact of Renewable Energy on Economic Growth in European Union Countries. And this paper has been co-authored with two colleagues from Romania. European Union energy policy has very specific objectives. These include diversifying energy sources and promoting renewables in the energy mix, developing a fully integrated European energy market, promoting energy efficiency, supporting the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, funding research and innovation in low carbon technologies, and supporting public-private partnerships in the field of low carbon energy. The ultimate goal is to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 and is mainly related to the promotion of low carbon energy sources, renewable energies in the European Union. Renewable energy has some significant advantages. Decrease of pollution and dependence of on fossil fuel production, fight against resource depletion, reduction of energy poverty, reduction of fossil fuel import needs and dependence on this type of export for many countries. The European Union strategy in the energy file is very ambitious and the progress achieved on this path is significant due to massive investments in this type of energy. The European Central Bank finances investments in the field of renewable energy and there are European Union funds in market for innovation in technological processes. The European Investment Bank, on behalf of the European Commission, provides technical assistance to private or public actors to support investments in energy efficiency in buildings or transport. The European Union sets its ambitious targets for renewable energy use at, level, at a level of 20% by 2020 32% by 2030, and to reach full carbon neutrality by 2050. The European Union achieved and even exceeded its ambitious 2020 target, with a 22% share of renewable energy consumption in the energy mix. But this target was achieved in the context of the pandemic, when total energy consumption decreased. This increase was, was supported by a significant increase in the share of renewables in electricity generation. Among the European Union countries with the best renewable energy performance in 2020 are the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Sweden, Spain, Portugal and Cyprus. Except for France, all European Union countries have achieved their 2020 renewable energy targets. The European Union also reached its target of 10% renewables in transport in 2020, based mainly on biofuels. Although the share of renewables in electricity used in transportation increased, it still represents a low percentage of total renewables used in transportation. The transport sector is one of the sectors that uses the less renewable energy, while energy demand in the sector sector is growing faster than in any other. Transport accounts for one-third of total energy consumption worldwide, mainly due to road transport, but only 3.7% of the total energy used in this sector comes from renewable sources. Renewable energy generation has become cheaper and more affordable and more efficient. Like transport, the industrial sector accounts for one-third of total energy consumption in the European Union, while renewables account for 80% on total industrial energy demand. Sweden, Finland and Germany are the largest consumers of renewable energy in the industrial sector, with half of the total demand for renewable across the European Union. The Baltic states and the Scandinavian countries rank first in terms of their share of renewables used in the biomass-based industrial sector. 
Holland, France, and Spain are also among the top countries in this area. Most European Union countries use biomass as renewable energy in this sector, while Germany, Italy, and the UK use mainly renewable electricity. There are many studies that investigate the relationship between renewable energy consumption and economic growth for European Union countries. Most of those studies found a positive relationship between renewable energy consumption and economic growth. Only a few researchers found mixed results or no relationship. Some previous studies investigated the relationship between total energy consumption in transport and economic growth in European Union countries and show a close relationship and emphasized the need for sustainable transport and sustainable development. It is necessary to carry out specific research to study the relationship between renewable energy and economic growth in the European Union area in economic sectors. In this way, European and national authorities can design appropriate policies in the energy file with the aim of promoting renewable energies in those sectors that support sustainable economic growth. We have investigated this relationship for 23 European Union countries during 1990 and 2020, based on the AMG and CCEMG estimators. The importance of renewable energies in the energy mix is growing worldwide. Among the advantages of using renewable energies are that they are inexhaustible resources, have a low environmental impact, and have the capacity to develop and promote growth in the areas where they are implemented, both in terms of GDP and employment. The concert for advancing the development of the renewable energy research file is evident in the growing literature that demonstrates the potential of renewable energy use worldwide and its relationship with the economic condition of countries. And while the nexus between economic growth and energy use in the context of various countries has been the subject of much empirical work, there is far less in the area of renewable energy. The debate on whether or not energy consumption contributes to economic growth has direct implication for the formulation of policy strategies. A large body of research has been devoted to examining the relationship between energy consumption, whether renewable, non-renewable or general, and economic growth. This association can be grouped into the following hypotheses. The methodological background is built around panel data models that start from understanding COP-TALAS function. 
And in the table, we can see the variable employed and the notation. An extended Cobb Douglas production function is proposed by augmented it with renewable energy consumption. Renewable energy consumption is replaced by other indicators corresponding to renewable energy consumption in industry, transport, by households, and in commercial and public services. The variables refer to more European Union countries, 23 member states, for which data series are available in the case of renewable energy consumption. The panel data refer to the period 99-2020. The log linear specification is rewriting as appear in the slide. The Robsnet check is conducted by considering renewable energy consumption, industry, transport, residential, purpose, and in commercial and public services. The methodology consists in preliminary tests before estimation and proper estimation and casualty analysis. Preliminary tests refer to cross-sectional dependence, slope heterogeneity, unit route, and co-integration. The cross-sectional dependence between countries is due to network connection, common shocks like a global crisis and issues related to correct simplification of the model. And the CD statistic is calculated as appear in the slide. The slope heterogeneity might be controlled to provide reliable estimation. The biased adjusted dispersion is computed to check for the slope homogeneity. The cross-sectionally augmented Dickey Fuller CADF test is used since it is robust to cross-sectional dependence. The statistic of this test is based on the next equations. For non-stationary data in level, Western Loom test is applied to check for cointegration. The null hypothesis of this test states the lack of cointegration. The growth mean statistics are employed to check co-integration for at least one cross-sectional unit. The panel statistics are employed to check if entire panel is co-integrated. Under cross-sectional dependence, low heterogeneity and co-integration, AMG and CCEMG estimator could be constructed. The CCEMG estimator captures and observes common effects with heterogeneous factor loadings. For the casualty, we employ the Jovodis, Caravias, and Sarafidis test. This test is employed to check for casualty in unbalanced panels, which is suitable for models with homogeneous heterogeneous parameters. Tumitrescu Harlin test could not be applied in this case, since the panels are unbalanced. The issue of nickel bias is solved by using half panel jackknife method. Before conducting the panel data analysis, the descriptive statistics are reported in this table for the values in lowering. The data are transformed by applying the natural logarithm to make interpretation of the results in terms of elasticities. The highest economic growth was registered by Germany in 2019 while Estonia reached the minimum value in 1919. Besides the economic performance, Germany used the most energy from renewable sources in 2013, while Luxembourg had the lowest performance in terms of renewable energy consumption. Sweden registered the highest renewable energy consumption in industry in 1997. Germany was leader of renewable energy consumption in transport in 27 and uh, of renewable energy consumption in commercial and public services in 2010, while France consumed maximum renewable energy in household in 1991. The cross sectional dependence is determined by the social, political, and economic connections between countries in the sample as European Union member states. This hypothesis is checked using Pesaran CD. 
On the other hand, heterogeneity is due to specific national evolutions that made countries to the same and targets in terms of renewable sources consumption. The slope heterogeneity test of Pesaran and Yamagata is employed in this case. The results suggest strong evidence of cross-sectional dependence and heterogeneity. The presence of unit root is checked using the second generation tests that are robust to cross-sectional dependence and heterogeneity. Moreover, the unbalanced panel suggests that CADF tests should be applied in this case. The equation associated to CADF tests is augmented by 1 and 2 lakhs because this test is sensitive lakhs number. The results indicate that the data for the all of the variables are stationary in the first difference at 5% significant level. The data series are integrated of order 1 at 1% significance level. Under heterogeneity and cross-sectional dependence, the cointegration is checked using Westerland test. More connections are checked between GDP, cross-fixed capital formation, employment to population ratio, exports, foreign direct investment, and one of the following variables. Renewable energy consumption, renewable energy consumption in industry, renewable energy consumption in transport, residential renewable energy consumption, renewable energy consumption for commercial and public services. Long-run parameters are built using augmented mean growth estimators. Robustness analysis is conducted using CCEMG. In most of the cases, gross fixed capital formation, employment to population ratio, and exports had a positive and significant impact on growth while the influence of foreign direct investment is not significant. Renewable energy consumption, renewable energy consumption in industry, renewable energy consumption in transport, and renewable energy consumption for commercial and public services had a positive and significant impact on economic growth, while renewable energy consumption in industry had not a relevant influence on GDP. The Jodis, Carabias, and Sarafidis 2021 causality test is applied. The causality analysis suggests that economic growth is a grander cause for renewable energy consumption in industry, and renewable energy consumption in transport is grander cause for economic growth at 5% significance level. For robustness, the CCE MD estimators confirm the positive and significant impact of gross fixed capital formation and exports on growth and the lack of significance for foreign direct investment. On the other hand, only renewable energy consumption and residential renewable energy consumption had a positive and significant effect on economic growth. And now we go with one of the most important conclusions of this study. Renewable energy in industry is not a factor of economic growth. Considering the Jolies, Carabias, and Sarathidis test, economic growth can predict renewable energy consumption in industry, so there is a unidirectional causality between those two variables, not a bidirectional one. And regarding the renewable energy consumption in transportation, AMG estimator shows its positive impact on the economic growth. More conclusions, the causality test also demonstrates a unidirectional causality running from renewable energy in transport sector to economic growth. CCEMG estimations does invalidate the positive relation between renewable energy in transport and economic growth but the share of renewable energy in transport in European Union is the lowest among the investigated economic sectors. The renewable energy use in residential area proved to have a significant and positive impact on economic growth 
and the capital accumulation of exports are also significant factors of economic growth in the European Union countries. We can provide different policy implications. European and national authorities should support investment in the field of renewable energy by granting tax facilities and financing to renewable energy producers or households promoting environmentally friendly behavior. Authorities should also reduce the exception of facilities granted to the use of fossil fuels. The implementation of solutions based on electricity from renewable sources can achieve the goal of reducing carbon emissions. More policies. Investment in biofuels can greatly contribute to achieving the goal of sustainable transport that can lead to sustainable economic growth in the European Union countries. And sustainable transport can support long-term sustainable economic development and can support new investment in the implementation of renewable energy sources in the industry. So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. It has been an honor to participate in this conference. Uh, you can see my email on the screen. So if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much.